Fiddler on the Roof is a story that has captured the world's imagination. The story was actually written originally as a series of Yiddish stories by Shalom Aleichem, the subject of a new biography by Jeremy Dauber, a professor of Yiddish and Jewish literature at Columbia University. Jeremy. Many will be surprised to know that in 1916, when Shalom Aleichem died, it was front page news. His funeral was, I think, the largest publicly attended funeral in New York. What were people mourning? Who was, who was he when he died? You know, this was one of the things that really surprised me when I started writing the biography of this Shalom Aleichem, this Yiddish writer, that here he had editorials about him in the New York Times, his will was read out on the, on the floor of the House of Representatives. This is not the normal fate for a Yiddish writer. It wasn't just uh, a certain kind of Jewish reader of his work. Uh, that, that attended his funeral, but it was all different kinds at a time when communities, like a lot of communities in America of the 20th century, were beginning to factionalize and fragment into all these different ways. And so he really, because of the kinds of stories he wrote, and I know we'll get into this, he, he was able to bring all of these groups together. But what that also did was it showed the non-Jewish audience out there, and his stories were beginning to be syndicated in English language translations, that that the Jewish story had something to say to the broader world uh, as well. And, and, and it really put, in some sense, this Eastern European Jewish community of the Lower East Side who came out to the funeral and, and, and around New York City on the map of the American mindset. So he has a reputation for being not only a Jewish writer, but a very Jewish writer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I wonder, I wonder what, what exactly that, that might mean and what he does offer the non-Jewish reader. I think, you know, it's one of these things where people ask me sometimes, I'm a professor of Yiddish and Jewish literature at Columbia, you know, why is it that I should read, I as a French literature major or something like that, why should I read Yiddish literature, why should I read Jewish literature? And I say, well, I can't give you any reason uh, to read it that I wouldn't give you to read French literature or ancient Greek literature, but that, that it's great literature, and in that sense it opens a door into the universal. Um, Many of the individuals who have come across the Tevye stories, for example, the ones that become Fiddler on the Roof, say this generational conflict between father and daughter in the face of a transforming world, of wanting to break away but still wanting to stay, of, 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 and this is one of the brilliances of the stories, have that perspective be told from an older generation who knows that they need to change but can only change so far, that feels very deeply rooted in a wide variety of cultures, so many that it becomes universal, even though it's grounded in specificity. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about Fiddler on the Roof and why the seemingly traditional story of, of shtetl life has such a, an international following. And you're entirely right that it has an international following. As a sort of exercise, uh, when I started writing the book, I just went onto YouTube and started typing in Fiddler on the Roof and then put a, a language next to it, Hindi or Turkish or Japanese. And you kept on finding, you know, these productions of w almost any language that you could think of, you know, there were. So and I think that one of the things that Shalom Aleichem was able to do is capture the flux uh, of a world in change and how people want things to stay the same and yet understand that they have to change. And that is a universal. Uh, everyone feels like the ground uh, is shifting under their, under their feet. And now, as I've become a new father, you can, you can see this uh, even more through your kids or through, through the world that you think your kids are going to have. And that, uh, that, that spoke extremely loudly to a number of people. And you write that um, many of the 20th century Jewish comedians owe, um, uh, owe him a debt of gratitude. And I, I'm wondering what, what, what made him so funny? Well, I think, you know, one of, his, one of these Tevye stories, in fact, one of the stories, the original ones, about to, ends by saying, you know, after telling a sort of long, sad story, he says, you know, let's just, uh, you know, let's not talk about that now. Let's change the subject and talk about something happier. Have you heard the news about the latest cholera outbreak in Odessa? <laughs> And I think in that, it sort of speaks to this thing of saying, you know, we have traumas in our lives, we have this, but if we talk about them and we, we make them into a joke and we turn them into language, um, we can master them in a way that, that takes the unmasterable and puts it under our control. And I think ultimately that that is the basis of a lot of Jewish humor in America in the 20th century, both in the sense of saying, we're going to take our outsider status um, you know, which and and talk about it and put it out there for people to show and, and laugh at it, and therefore we're in charge of it. 
And then the other thing I think is to say that it's a very personal kind of approach. It's my trauma, it's my problem, and that leads to this kind of confessional humor that is so popular in stand-up comedy, for example, in the second half of the 20th century. Whether all of these individuals are saying, I owe this directly to Shalom Aleichem, that almost certainly not, but that kind of style comes from a kind of Yiddish talking comedy in some ways that Shalom Aleichem was the master of, even if he did it by writing it down on paper and publishing it. Thank you so much, Jeremy Dauber. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. The Economist.